a reading from the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1. The Apostle Paul says to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did when I remember you constantly in prayer night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I might be filled with joy. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and now, I am sure, lives in you. The word of the Lord. So I love reading this text this morning. This is actually one of the lectionary passages for this upcoming Sunday, which I'm not going to be preaching on, but I was reflecting on it this morning in my own personal devotion. And as many of you might know, I'm currently in Tennessee. I came to Tennessee so that I could be part of the dedication of my new niece. She's Baptist, so she'll get baptized later in life. But yesterday, we dedicated her life to the church, and her parents took vows, very much like how we do in baptism. And the whole experience just got me thinking about my own experience of church and our church and all the people who made vows at my baptism to make sure that I was raised in the faith. And I did, I had my parents and my grandparents, people who loved me and cherished me at home that taught me about who God is and God's love in the world. But I also had grandparents and parents and brothers and sisters in my faith community who, um, who meant so much to me. I, there was a couple who just volunteered to be a part of the youth group I was in. I still remember their names. Their name was Derek and Amber. And they were two people who were not paid to be at the church, but they just were a part of the youth group. They were adults who didn't have to care about me, but they did care about me. When I was hurting, they would listen. When I needed to have a good time, they would be a part of our fun activities at church. And I think of them as spiritual mentors who were in my life, who taught me about God's love and our reasons. They are people who God put in my life. And I think I am a pastor today. And my faith is important to me because I had people like them in my life. And so as you go throughout this week, I encourage you to think about who your spiritual mentors have been. Who are the people in your life that God put to there to teach you more about who God is? But then also, how might you be a spiritual guide and caretaker to others in your life? How might you show God's love to someone who you don't have to be there for, but you get to be there for, um, constantly showing God's grace and love? I hope you have a good week. Bye.